So, but I'm going to introduce you to the next guy now. So, please give a warm week or to our wow, warm welcome to our esteemed guest speaker, doctor and author Frank Ferreira. Frank is a proud owner of Greater Pittsburgh Joint and Muscle Center and the author of the groundbreaking book Health Living Made Simple. With his wealth of knowledge and expertise, Frank has helped countless individuals achieve optimal. Oh, excuse me. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh. Oh, sorry, got a little up there, got a little. Take over, Paul. Sure thing. So we're going to introduce Dr. Frank Vera. He's the uh, head uh, and chiropractor of Greater Pittsburgh Joint and Muscle Center. Frank is a near and dear friend to us. Uh, Frank has a multitude of different things that he specializes in from life coaching to nutrition to diabetes remission. Uh, and we would like to give him the proper attention when it comes to health and wellness. So Frank, this is your section and our key speaker. Well, thank you so much for everybody. Thanks for uh, having me on here today. And thank you, Paul, for the introduction. Hope Mike's okay. I don't know, but I heard him out to get off this thing quite quickly. Uh, Paul, can you go to the next slide a second, please? I want to share everybody something here. <clears throat> the picture on the left is a picture of me, May 18th of 2022, literally one year ago. The picture on the right is a picture of me, June 18th, 2022, 30 days later. Now, what a, the interesting part is the picture on the left was a picture of me dying. Now, mind you, here I was. I had a great practice. I have a great home, a wonderful wife, great kids. But that picture on the left was me dying. I was setting myself up. I was doing everything I was supposed to for retirement. I was putting money away, building equity, all of these things. But I wasn't giving myself a chance to be there when I did retire. You see, I could have had all the money in the world, but if I didn't have my health, what would I have? So my conversation with you today is about your health care retirement, not health care insurance, not your finances, but what are you doing about your health? So when that time comes around, what are you going to do? You're putting all this money away and you're building up all this equity. What are you going to do with it? I have plans of wanting to dance with my grandkids. I don't have grandkids yet, but I plan on doing it at some point. <clears throat> so... What I did is I had to put my mindset to it. I say, what is it that's going to take place that's going to change me and make sure I have that investment? Right? So I, what I did is I followed my dream. Now, many of you are thinking, well, he's going to start talking about dreams and something in his head and something. Good. No. Dream is an acronym. You see, the basics of the human body have never changed since the conception. Dream is an acronym. D, diet. R, rest. E, exercise. A, adjustments. M, mental health. Somewhere in your dream, if you're not reaching your maximum potential and feeling good about yourself, somewhere in your dream, your problem lies. Can we go to the next slide, please? There we go. <clears throat> so I want to talk to you about each acronym for a moment here. In your diet, we get so focused on calories. How many calories am I putting in my body? How much am I expending and so forth? But one thing I want you to understand is Calorie intake alone is not sufficient enough to predict weight loss, nor is it sufficient enough to maintain your body. It's the right calories. You actually need the right calories to burn calories to keep your body moving. It's kind of a hard concept to grasp, but you need the right amount of calories to do it. Now, if your body requires, let's say, 1,800 calories per day, try to get your calories within that range because that is important. And be somewhere in that range. And again, that's subjective. You know, if you're supposed to eat 1,800 calories per day and you're eating a 4,000, that's not in a range. Okay, but somewhere with close enough in that ballpark would be there. Next slide, please. More importantly than calories is your metabolic rate. How fast is your body breaking this food down? Now, the interesting part about it is your body is pre designed to take in certain foods and break them down. But there's certain things that we ingest in our body that we're not prepared to do, such as processed food. So I'll give you an example. If you spend all morning eating nothing but kale and carrots, your body could have, who would want to do that, by the way? However, if you spend all morning eating kale and carrots, your body could break that down very fast. Let's say at, for dinner, you eat a piece of pepperoni pizza. Well, pepperoni is a processed food. 
your body's not designed to break this down immediately. So it can take up to 24 hours for your body to break down a piece of food that we ingested that's not a real food. While all that kale and carrots is passing right through, you're not absorbing it. Okay? So let's say you get the next morning, you wake up and you fire down a donut. Well, now you have 24 hours of the pepperoni. You had another 24 hours for the donut on top of it. So your body's not breaking food down and your metabolic rate slows down, thus giving you less energy, thus storing fat, retaining water. All these factors happen when you have a slow metabolic rate. Next slide, please. And this is a big one. Now, look, I'm Italian. Okay, we eat. We make food entertainment. Food is not entertainment. Food is substance that keeps our bodies going. I'll give you an example. We all wait for big holidays, such as Thanksgiving. How do you really feel after Thanksgiving dinner? No one eats a big Thanksgiving dinner and says, wow, I could go exercise right now. No, we plop our butt on the couch. Most of us fall asleep. We feel bloated. We feel full. And then we go right into the holiday season in December, which for some reason, every holiday thinks cookies are involved. Okay? <clears throat> we make ourselves, food is not entertainment. And when you get to the point you make it entertainment, no, we made it comfort food. Understand that. But again, it's not comfort food. It's not comfort. It's comfort food. It's not entertainment. We need to get out of the idea that food's entertainment is fuel for our body. Next slide, please. R is rest. You sleep a third of your life. Why? People say, why do you sleep a third of your life? Because you need it. The human body is not meant to go hours and hours and hours without rest and recuperation. Have you ever heard of REM cycle sleep? Your REM cycle sleep is actually taking place as your body's own anesthesia that puts you out and repairs your body. Your body repairs when you go into REM cycle sleep. If you're not hitting REM cycle sleep, all these injuries and breakdowns you have for your body are not going to heal itself. Now, people in here, we have some financial people here. <clears throat> A statistic showed that most billionaires, not million with an M, B with a billion with a B, awake between 5 and 6 a.m. every morning. Why is that? Because the highest amount of alpha activity in the brain and most creativity takes place between 5 a.m. and 6 a.m. in the morning. And most billionaires wake up at that time. The highest amount of beta activity, which helps you put you to sleep and get you to sleep, take place between 9.30 and 10.30 at night. Now, there's a little situation that happens here. If you go past that 10.30, how many of you have been at a nightclub when you were younger and you're really tired? All of a sudden, 10, yeah, 10 30, like I need to go home. Now, all of a sudden, midnight rolls around, you have all this energy coming back. Well, there's a defense mechanism your body has. It's a legitimate called second wind. Your body fires out a barren alpha waves around midnight to give you that second wind while you can't fall asleep. The problem is they're not real alpha waves and you lose creativity. This is why at two o'clock in the morning, you're wondering if penguins have kneecaps or not and thinking about crazy stuff that makes no sense at two o'clock in the morning. So it's important to make sure you get your creativity and your rest at the times the body is suggesting you do that. Next slide, please. We're talking about investments. Here's an investment that I would highly recommend for everyone. here: Invest in a mattress that works for you. That's a good mattress. Come on, a third of your life is laying there. You need to be in something that's comfortable. You got to give your body that chance to rest. If you don't give your body that chance to rest, Nothing you do is going to make your body productive. You're not going to make smart choices. You're not going to do smart things to take care of your body. You're not going to work well with your family or your kids. Raise your hand. I can see some of you. Raise your hand if you've never had a good night's sleep and you woke up just a little bit irritable. Am I the only one? Come on, don't lie to me. Raise them. Keep them up. I see them. Go ahead. Uh-huh. I see it. Some of you didn't raise your hand. And I, I saw that. But you wake up, you're irritable. You're not feeling good. Make sure you're getting the appropriate amount of sleep. The ideal hours are between six to eight hours of sleep. And by the way, as you age is when that number should come down. People sometimes question teenagers. They fall asleep at 11 o'clock at night. They wake up at 11 o'clock in the morning. They're not lazy. That's their neurochemistry as they're growing. But as we get older, those times decrease. I'll give you an example. I'm 52, and I can probably do well in six and a half, seven hours of sleep with no problem. I would love to have 11 hours, but I couldn't do it anymore. Next one, please. This is a big one. When you go to sleep, turn your phone off, turn your TV off. Some people say, I can't sleep without a TV. Yes, you can. You're choosing not to. Use some white noises machine if you need to, but turn your phone off. Again, if we're staring at our phone all night, we're not going to be able to increase that beta wave activity that we're looking for between 930 and 1030. 
and we're going to be wide awake and we're not going to be arrested. Secondly, I'll give you another example of what you can do. Next to my bed is a notebook with a pen. If I wake up at three o'clock in the morning and I want to know how long the neck of a giraffe is, which is irrelevant at three o'clock in the morning, it's not time to think about that. I write it down and go back to sleep so I don't forget about it. Not time to think about it. There's nothing happening at 3 a.m. that's going to make you not fall back or that make you not warrant you sleeping. God forbid, unless you have to call 911. So make sure you're asleep. It's crucial. It's the repair of your body. It's what's needed. You're not lazy. You need to sleep. Next slide, please. Exercise. Here's the one. Listen, there is no getting around exercise. I wish there was, because if there was, and I discovered a way to get around exercise. I'd be a billionaire and I'd take you all with me. But we can't do that right now. You have to exercise. Now, my, just so you know, hard work is not exercise. Hard work is hard work. Yes, you're burning calories, but exercise is a mindset also. It's giving you 20, 30, 40 minutes where you're putting your mind into taking care of your body. And there's a different neurochemistry and neurophysiology that takes place with that. By the way, just so you know, uh, 20 minutes of cardio three times a week can improve sleep by 87%. Okay, I'm not talking about going out and running a marathon. I'm talking about getting up and doing a walk, a brisk walk, something gets your heartbeat up a little bit. Next slide, please. Weight work is crucial our entire life, but as we age, it gets more and more important. Women, if you are over the age of 30, by the time you turn 30, you stop producing your own calcium, which means your bones will start getting brittle. So how do we protect our bones? We do weight-bearing exercises. Weight on the bone will build bone up. Gentlemen, when we turn 40, our testosterone levels drop by 74%. How do we build that up? With weight-bearing exercises. There's something that shows when you contract muscle, you put force to it, you build your testosterone levels up. It's crucial, but most importantly, muscle mass is where metabolism takes place. So the more muscle mass you have, the greater your metabolic rate be, the more metabolism you're going to have, the way you're going to be able to break foods down, the way you're not going to retain water and build fat and set yourself up for things like atherosclerotic heart disease and high blood pressure. Next slide, please. Stretching is crucial. You know, we, everybody got this big yoga kick. I think the last like decade, we started seeing women wearing yoga pants for no apparent reason whatsoever. I don't know where that trend took place. However, um, they were there. I just wish more women would start doing yoga who wear the yoga pants. Yoga is a great thing because it gives you stretching. If you don't want to do yoga, because I don't, I still stretch every day. Stretching is important. Range of motion is so important, which is going to be the next segue as we go into something here, but it's so important because if you don't have a range of motion, you're setting yourself up for injury, falls, um, sprains, strains, and most importantly, you're putting compressive force on your joints, which cause arthritis. Folks, Old age does not cause arthritis. Compressive force on the joint does. It just so happens that your age parallels that. So you've got to have good range of motion to help prevent degenerative disc disease or osteoarthritis. Next slide, please. As a chiropractor, it's my job to tell you why it's so important that everybody get adjusted. Okay, A is an adjustment. Everybody should be getting adjusted. And here's the reason why. If you were born and I gave you one car to drive the rest of your life, you'd take good care of that car, wouldn't you? Now, let's say you're at age 22 and all of a sudden that engine light comes on and you realize that if this car breaks down, you're not getting another car. How fast are you running to the mechanic? Pretty fast because you don't want to walk the rest of your life. Folks, in our body, we can get our eyebrows rising. We can get our eyes fixed. We can get our lips blown up. We can get our chest increased or decreased. We can increase our belly. Hey, we can shrink or increase our booty if we choose to. But you have one spine, one, and you're not getting back. There's no surgery that's going to correct it to the point. You can replace your knee or replace your shoulder. You cannot correct your spine. It has to be done with motion of the spine. It has to be done the right way. So if you're not working with a chiropractor, I want you to get with the right chiropractor for two reasons. And none of them have to do with the fact that you're in pain or quote unquote, something's out. Guess what? Here's the biggest secret of chiropractic. Nothing's ever out that gets pushed back in. Next slide, please. What's actually happening is something called mechanoreception. <clears throat> mechanoreception decreases pain. I'll give you an example. I take a hammer and a nail, and I miss back, and I miss the nail, and I smack my thumb. What do I do? I go, ow. What am I doing? I'm moving my hand. Movement decreases pain. It's called mechanoreception. 
If you burn your arm, you rub the burn, it decreases pain. If you're stiff, you move, it decreases pain. Movement decreases pain, it's called mechanoreception. It's essential that all your joints have it. If you don't, you're setting yourself up for increased pain. Next slide, please. The second one that movement does is called proprioception. Proprioception stands for your balance, your muscle memory, and your orientation in space. Now, balance and muscle memory we get, but look at my thumb here. If I look this way and help my thumb this way, how do I know my thumb's at a seal? That's called proprioception or your orientation in space. A person with a proprioceptive problem will turn their head this way and turn their thumb this way and say, my thumb's up to the ceiling. There's a problem there, okay? Proprioception is important because as we age, one of the biggest problems we're having nowadays are people falling. You wanna know how important balance is nowadays? Harvard just said it's the number one healthcare concern gonna be addressing us in the next 10 years. A study was done by the British Journal of Medicine that showed if you are over the age of 55 and you cannot stand up and raise one leg and hold it for 10 seconds without falling or needing a, wobbling over or needing assistance, you have a 100% chance of mortality within 10 years. This is backed by the New England Journal of Medicine. It's a very, very real problem. Please do yourself a favor. Make sure your range of motion stays there. Get with a decent chiropractor that's going to work with you and help you keep that range of motion and keep that uh, balance. Next slide, please. M stands for mental health. <clears throat> now we have this big problem with mental health. We have this problem trying to control things. Okay, Us not having the ability to control something is the biggest upset our body has. So I want you to think about an equation. If you can start something, if you can change it, and you can stop it, then you can control it. That's what control is. If you can't start, change, and stop, you can't control it. I'm not talking about being really good at starting. If you add more start, it's not gonna make a difference. You have to have the ability to start, change, and stop to control something. One of the biggest things we get frustrated with is that we can't really control another human being's actions. How many of you have been stressed out of our family sometime because of their actions? Raise your hand again. Yes, just me and Mike. There you go. Hi, Kimberly. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And everybody's raising their hand now. We, are, we all have family. I get it. <clears throat> if my family is on here, they've raised their hand talking about me. However, if you can't control something, I want you to think about what can you do? Only thing you can control is your reaction at that point. But we stress over things too, too much because we can't control it. If it's, you can't start, change, and stop it, it's not yours to control. Next slide, please. When we have a problem, we say, so we look at, an, at this equation here. We have a problem, and we want a viable final product or a solution to it. So when we have a problem, we tend to put actions into place to get us to our, our solution or a viable final product. The problem is it has to be a correct action. How many of you have had a problem, thought I'm gonna try to do something and it didn't work out the way you wanted it to? Okay, I have it a lot because I didn't put in the correct action. We had to discover that correct action and most of the time it doesn't happen on the first time of us trying to figure out how to get to the problem or to get to the viable final product, right? <clears throat> so it has to be the correct action and here's the big one. Despite your emotion of it, if you want the result, you have to look past the emotion that comes with the correct action. Two plus two equals four. It's never going to be two plus three equals four. Now, I can make it three plus one equals four. I can make it 0 0.5 plus 3.5 equals four. I can change the equation, but the correct action has to be there, whether we like it or not. And if you don't like the correct action, maybe you need to change your valuable final product and find a different solution. But it's right there waiting for you to figure out. Next slide, please. We all want freedom. Let's be honest with ourselves. We talk about our jobs. We talk about our retirement. We talk about what we want to do. You know, Janice Joplin says freedom is just another word for nothing left to lose. Well, what is freedom? Freedom is having time plus money. If you have time and the finances to do something, technically you're free. But I want to throw a little caveat to that. If you don't have your body, what are you doing? You can have time plus money and be sitting in a wheelchair. My father was 64 years old when he passed away. He was retired. He had time. He had plenty of money, but he also had lung cancer. Okay. He couldn't put cigarettes down. He knew cigarettes were bad for him. He knew, we all know it wasn't good for you, but he couldn't put them down. He didn't make it 65. My mother didn't even retire. And my father passed away. Now, my mother was left with time and money, 
but we're my father come out of folks your health is important everything we're talking about here is irrelevant if you're laying in a nursing home everything is irrelevant here if your heart's not working the way it should if your body's not functioning if you're not moving some of us are still young enough here that we don't have grandkids i have teenage kids but someday we're going to have grandkids i want to play with my grandkids i don't want to just sit there and watch them okay it's okay to focus on your health. You're allowed to. You are just as important as everyone else. Please take care of yourself. Follow your dream, and I wish you all the best in your success. Thank you for allowing me to speak for you today.